It's late winter for you, but we're actually filming this in late May because I want you to see how bad fire blight can, disease can be. Uh, fire blight's a bacterial disease and it affects apples, pears, and then other plants that are closely related to apple and pear. Uh, some years we'll see it on photinia, raspberry, uh, strawberry, but we're really gonna focus today on fire blight management on your apples and pears in your home orchard. So if you haven't started a home orchard and you're out shopping for trees, one of the first things you can do is to try to find trees that say they are highly resistant to fire blight disease because that built-in resistance is gonna make it so your tree never looks as bad as this one. Second step, if you already have existing trees that are having some level of fire blight, you can start doing this in August, all through the fall and in the winter. You want to closely scout those trees and look for what are called cankers. The fire blight disease causes the shoots to blacken and as the bacteria becomes dormant, at the base of that blackening, there's sort of a cracked, sunken area that looks a little bit different. That's the canker. And that's where the bacteria survives uh, when it's not active. So during the fall and winter months. As we are getting close to the time that apples and pears are going to bloom in Oklahoma, sometime usually in uh, late February or March, this is the time to decide if you're going to use any chemical management for fire blight. Um, so some of you may want to do no spray home orchards. If you wanna do that, you really need that a uh, highly resistant plant. But if you are willing to spray some chemicals, you can get a greater variety of apple and pear types if you're willing to spray fungicides or bactericides. So the products that we use for fire blight control are copper containing fungicides. There are several different types available in your local garden center. That's one choice. And there are versions of copper sprays that are suitable for organic gardens if you want to go that route. Another product that can be used is an antibiotic. Uh, the active ingredient in fire blight spray is streptomycin sulfate. So both of these products are highly selective uh, for fire blight. They're not gonna hurt any of your pollinators. However, it's still best to spray them late in the day after the pollinators have gone home because I'm sure it's kind of hard to fly when you're wet and sticky. As we move uh, later in the spring, if you do have some fire blight develop, you might start to see what we're seeing on this tree here, several different shoots with the blackening, the discoloration. And this is where your next great step in fire blight management is pruning. So um, get your pruning tools and start cutting it out. Anytime you see something diseased, it's good to go ahead and cut that out of the tree rather than just let it go. Uh, with pruning in the spring for fire blight, you need to be really aggressive. So you might have, you know, maybe I just take off a little bit below where it's blackened. Much better to go at least 12 to 18 inches below the blackening. Where it's black is where the bacteria has killed it, but the bacteria has already moved lower in that branch. It just hasn't killed it yet. So be aggressive and vigilant with your pruning. Uh, since we're talking about pruning, bacteria are really easy to spread with pruning tools. So I like to use about five or six different hand tools. And I carry a little bucket with me that I put in one part bleach, nine parts water so that I can rotate through those tools by the time I've got to the sixth one and go back to the first. A lot of the antibiotics, or excuse me, the bacteria sides, these disinfectants need a couple of minutes to do their disinfecting action so I can make sure those tools are clean and I'm ready to go. Um, there's lots of different choices for disinfectants. You can purchase sprays and wipes and things like that. Just pay attention to how long they take to work. Now, as we get into the hot and dry part of summer, late July and August, that's when the fire blight bacteria goes dormant and that's where we start over. We start looking for those overwintering cankers and continue pruning them out of trees. So fire blight management, resistance is your best strategy. If you're going to try to treat and prevent the disease, spraying the blooms uh, about every four to seven days. And then third, vigilant pruning to try to cut out any of the disease should it develop.
Uh, hopefully with those tips, you can have a, uh, keep your he plants healthy, fire blight free, and end up with a really good fruit crop. We hope you enjoyed this video as part of our Oklahoma Gardening YouTube channel. You can also find even more videos on the OK Gardening Classics YouTube channel. And join us on social media for great gardening tips, photos, and discussion.